do a little bit differently on a heavier, stronger door um, with much stronger hinges and everything. And then I move on to my dumbbell flat pullovers. Um, they've been a staple in my uh, routine for very long time, very, very long time. Um, and then I move on to biceps. I'll go over biceps once I move on to it in a minute. So we're just going to go ahead and drop it down to a lighter band. As I said, we were descending on these. These are the end of your rows. Depending on how your routine is structured, it may differ, but for me, um, because of the way I'm doing this, these this is the end for my rows, okay? And probably the end for my uh, lats as well. I uh, could show you the lat pullovers, but today, this video and this week's videos are meant to showcase just resistance bands, a floor, and yourself, and possibly a door. All right, so. We're going to go ahead, and I want a little bit more tension. If you want to see where, how I'm positioned here, this is where I'm at. And I'm still driving back. Get that elbow right back there. All right. I want to clean up that, get a little bit more parallel to the floor if I can. I lose a great amount of tension at the bottom. That's why, see, that's why I bring it up just a bit higher. I believe that was seven. I lost track again, okay? So, it's probably possibly best that I show you this way as well. All right. So, this is if you're more parallel to the floor. But I start a bit higher. Because I want that really good stretch. If you are looking for lower back variations before I move on to biceps, I will be showing these on leg day. But for back generally, lower back specifically, one of my recommendations, it depends on your routine structure and your lifting style, your goals. Um, if you're doing deadlifts in any other part of your routine, then Go ahead and skip a minute or two into the video because, or skip another minute away because this is pointless. So, the only really good way I know of of activating the lower back is we want a somewhat close feet positioning, and we're basically going to only be able to do a form of a rack pull, okay? So, you're basically just deadlifting this. That's it. That's all. And because of the bands, the bands are going to get great activation because you can go right slow. You can't do this with a barbell. You will hurt yourself if you attempt to do this a lot with a barbell, especially with heavy weight. Lightweight weight will be fine, obviously, but you don't want to incorporate those at all if you're doing deadlifts in your routine anywhere else or even if you're not really a power lifter in general, if you don't have any intention of doing any powerlifting style workouts, you don't even need to be going to um, powerlifting meets. You could just be that style of lifter. If you aren't though, you may not want to incorporate that because I will be showing um, two deadlift variations, including uh, one being one I just showed, on leg day, okay? So, we're gonna go ahead and switch the biceps. All right. So I'm gonna show how I set up for this, okay? So, the band just has to be, what we're doing now is what's called a barbell Basically just a concentration curl, barbell curl, 
mimic, whatever you'd like to consider it. But that's what we're doing. Get it into position. And when you want to move around, just put a little bit of tension on the band and tension against your feet and bring it back and you can play with it all you'd like. Now, I'm going to bring it back again because there's something I'd like to show you. So, I'm going to just lift my, bring this up, lift my feet to release that tension at the band and make it nice and perfect. My feet are even in the proper position. Alright. So, if you have trouble with making sure there's resistance on both sides of the band, go ahead and just bring it to the middle of the band and pull it. It'll just give you a mental feeling, that mind-muscle connection of that resistance. Once you start getting that, you can put your hands in the middle and just pray them. Bring them out and put your hands. And I like to just use my, my knees, my actual knees, so give me an idea. And I can just pull on the band and I can feel. It's about the same. Same on both ends. So we're just going to curl. Now... I am going to just move over a bit, and I'm going to reset just to make sure I have proper tension. And when we curl it, if you keep your elbows more to your side, you get a good bicep activation still, but it involves a brachialis to a higher degree because it's a stronger elbow flexor. So if you want more bicep activation out of this, if the band keeps your hands supinated. That is a wonderful thing. You want to bring your elbows just a bit forward. That's why people do that. Is because if you keep your elbows directly to your side, you're activating the brachialis. And it is a stronger elbow flexor than the bicep itself because of its positioning. So, just another general rule of that, just to show you. So, if we have it directly to our side, sorry, you involve the bicep to a good degree, but you can't squeeze it because you are actually activating the brachialis, and it's a much stronger elbow flexor, especially if you have your elbow static. All you're doing is flexing your elbow. So, logically, the muscle that would be the most, to have the highest EMG activity for hypertrophic reasons would be the brachialis in that circumstance. Now, if you're trying to get full motor unit engagement with a lighter based, that's absolutely fine. But you do need to incorporate bringing the elbow slightly forward. As you can see, when I go like this, I really feel the brachialis doing the work here. The bicep just kind of seems like it's there. When you start going like this, even that small, you really feel the greater squeeze. Another thing to keep in mind is the way preacher curls work. They don't let you keep your elbow to your side. This is why some people can go pick up a hundred pound barbell and curl it like this. And then when you go make them do a preacher curl, they can't touch even 80 pounds. And it's not their fault. And it's not anything super negative or anything. It's just they don't really realize through their own mind muscle connection that they're not fully activating the bicep to its proper degree. Um, a great example as well is when anybody does bent over bicep curls, or sorry, bent over uh, single handed bicep curls. They never keep their elbow static. You're always supposed to try to get that bicep squeeze because bringing that elbow forward, even you're not swinging it forward, just it's a small movement. When you get that in there, you get that bicep squeeze, especially on the single-handed bicep curls. So if you're going like this, you really feel that it's not the bicep. Once you go like this, so you can actually start squeezing the bicep, and you really start feeling the bicep. When you're like this, 
or even like this. When you keep that step, you see, me personally, I always want to, but if you're tr keeping this static, you're, you're hitting the brachialis. It is a much stronger elbow flexor. Um, it's always going to be activated in a curl. So this is just some general line of thinking. <laughs> so we're going to move on to the next bit. Uh, just to keep in mind, my workout style is hypertrophic. Um, it is just the way I've always worked out because I used to be uh, 330 pounds when I used to be 14. Um, so I've been working out for a very long time for mass growing reasons. I've never uh, uh, comp used, went to competitions or any of that crap. I'm not like that. So um, this is just general advice. If you'd like more information, like to talk to me or have questions, go ahead and just shoot comments. So, so we're going to switch down to another rise of curl. The great thing about this is once again, if you're doing this and you find that you're not getting enough tension at the bottom, you can spread your feet out. I don't recommend it too much. You want to keep the same position you would keep if you did a bicep concentration curl, okay? So once again, it keeps our hands supinated. We want to bring that forward just a little bit. Get that actual bicep activation in there. And because the way the bands run, they want to keep your hands supinated. It doesn't give a crap. But there is an issue where um, if you don't let it force your hands to keep supinated, this happens. You don't want that. You don't want to bring your, you're going to lose activation when you bring your hands closer together for bicep, any type of bicep workout. You're not going to lose bicep activation altogether, but you will lose proper motor unit activation um, in its natural movement, basically, biomechanical action. For anybody who thinks that uh, you can't grow mass with bands, um, they obviously have never, uh, I'm, I don't like to be, give this level of criticism, because it is about the individual. It's usually the lack of mind-muscle connection. Um, it, depending on with what you have, most people can work out with very minimal, if they know what they're doing and have a pro proper mind-muscle connection. Um, a great example will be on leg day, all right? So, it's not criticism towards anybody saying that they don't know or they're not smart. It's just that they don't have a proper mind-muscle connection with their, their mind and their individual muscles. Everyone's different. Obviously, a power lift, a person who's always focused on building power is going to have a different ideology than somebody who's always focused on trying to bodybuild. But somebody who's, let's say, bodybuilt for over a decade, naturally, um, they would most likely... Anyway, I'm just going to say that most people do not have a good enough mind-muscle connection, and they need, they need to spend a little bit of time with bands before they can really even give an opinion on them for themselves. Because, just because I'm showing all of this, the, you can go attempt all of it and some of it could suck. Biomechanically, it could just be uncomfortable for you to do some things, set up for some things, or even, some of these are not for everyone and not for every routine. Once again, if you're an Olympic lifter, you don't want to be focusing on performing slow hypertrophic workouts you're you want explosive power towards your Olympic lifts so there is always going to be a different ideology when it comes to lifting so that's just something to keep in mind in terms of hypertrophic potential though specifically for growing mass bands actually have great potential and the stoop, I'm not going to get into too, too much stuff, but I'm just going to use one word, and it's called penation angles. 
basically you create more ten. I don't even know. The, I'm gonna be honest. I don't even understand the full biomechanical meaning of it all. But apparently, there's coils of bundles of muscle. Long story short, it seems like when you have a resistance band and you're going under, you're able to get a greater angle on the muscle that's actually pulling in that direction. Basically, if you're going for motor unit activation or hypertrophic potential, that would be very beneficial. Obviously, this is just, um, uh, I'm going to be honest, theoretical, so just keep all that in mind. Um, but it does have to do with penation angles specifically, and as long as you're performing a, the movement in a biomechanical, as I'm showing, in a biomechanically proper range of motion, it, you're, you have that hypertrophic potential. In terms of power, as I said, you do not want to be trying to you don't want to be a power lifter who performs an extremely powerful one rep um, bench. You don't want to be on, especially on a heavy routine, uh, like a specifically a load or loaded routine or a load day. You don't want to be doing some type of light stretch based hypertrophic stuff. You can actually cause a lot of damage there those tendons, that those muscle bodies are primed for explosive movements. They're not primed to stretch under load for an extended amount of time. Obviously, if they're going lighter, they're going to be fine. But if you're, I'm just going to use a horrible, really weird example, but let's say you had an extremely thick, uh, triple, quadruple of that orange one, and you gave it to Eddie Hall, and he was to use it, he would likely like it and be able to use it, no problem, but he wouldn't most likely like it. He would say, like, it, it creates too much tension for too long. It's not going to carry, it might have some carryover, but basically it's going to have too much risk for that type of working out. And I hate to be like this, but I'm going to try to finish up this routine, okay? So we're going to just jump into biceps now, or back into our concentration curls. And we're just going to go ahead and curl it. And once again, our line of pull is proper. And the thing is, is at the top range of motion, I have to stabilize it much greater than with a barbell, especially if I lower it slowly, it creates so much more tension on the tendons. Now, a power-based lifter might not want to do that, especially if they're doing extremely explosive cross gri uh, uh, mixed grip and deadlift of any type, putting any type of uh, any type of accessory that could have risk towards their actual routine or their style could be detrimental. So basically, there are certain things that will be good uh, with power for bands, but generally when it's a when it's um, an isolation ba any type of isolation based, you don't really want to be doing any type of power band stuff. Once again, as I said, when you go like this, you can actually, I'm not even putting much tension on the band, and I'm getting some activation, but if I go like this, I am not doing anything. Especially, even if I let it go a little bit slow, and keep the, I'm going to lose a lot of, I'm going to lose a lot of growth potential in terms of the muscle fully lengthening under that tension and being able to cause the micro-fractures for that potential hy potential hypertrophic growth. And when you're able to hold it just a little bit, you're, you're getting more motor unit activation under that increased tension. When you have that increased motor unit um, activation, and then you have an even slower eccentric for this isolatory movement, you have much more potential for hypertrophic growth, theoretically. Once again, we want to try to separate the idea of power-based explosive movements, 
stretch based isolation movements. Alright, so we're going to jump on to Give me a moment. We're going to go ahead and jump on to variations. So, this is not going to be for everybody. This is my lightest band. It says it can only take, I think, 10 to 35 pounds of tension. I'm about to put it under much more tension than that. So if I go ahead and go like this. We want to make sure, once again, as you can see, the right side is a little high. I noticed once I picked it up. Once you have that mind-muscle connection, the moment you go up, you will have a mental idea of what's happening with the band, especially when you have your feet connected to the band without shoes on. It really just helps create that mind-muscle connection. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and stand up, hit just a little forward, just make sure I'm stabilized, and I'm going to... And it's under a great amount of tension right now. And I'm going to be honest, this feels like it's more than 20 pounds on each side. Alright? Feels like it's a little bit more than 20 pounds on each side. So, going to the black band, which is 10 to 50 pounds of tension. I do believe that this is actually bringing the band beyond its stretch, the rated stretch limit. Including that red band, this band was rated for 10 to 50, so it should feel technically like I have 25 pounds on each side, correct? But it does not. So, put feet directly together because it's going to be a lot of attention. We're just going to go ahead. Curl that up. And I do believe that was a lot more than 25 pounds on each side. Um, using an example, give me one minute. I'm just going to sip some water. Once again, we're just going to grab our 85 pound barbell, and I'm going to go ahead and curl it. Alright, so, I'm going to be honest with you, I do believe that 85 pound barbell felt lighter than that 50 pound bend. Alright, so when people say uh, hypertrophic potential, um, Hypertrophic potential is possible with isometrics and bands and all of that. Alright, so we want some single handed var uh, var variations now, right? So, alright. Once again, we're gonna jump back and we're gonna find out the mini loop band tension. Alright, so we're going to start with a 10 to 20 pound. Actually, we're going to go ahead and go descending. I'm only going to probably do three sets because my medium band is broken. I only have, um, this is the lightest band. This is the next lightest. This one's broken, which is the next. This and then this. So I only have these to work with. I do have a dumb, dumbbell set that can, but I'm not going to do that. You can also simply just grab this and curl it as well. It creates the proper line of pull as well. Alright, so. Uh, yes, we're going descending. That was my mistake. 
Alright, so we're gonna go ahead and I want it running under my foot like that. I like that. That's where I usually have the band, alright? So let it lose tension and make it a little handle for yourself. Bring it under tension and keep the elbow out a bit. And really squeeze it. Alright. Um, everybody's different. They may not like this ver ver variation. Um, I just like it overall. I just like it overall because it's another isolation that you can add to your routine, right? So once again, we're just going to use an example. Hello, light band. So using this light band and the light, if I keep my elbow back, you can see a great amount of activation in the brachialis. If I bring it forward, you can still see brachialis activation, but you can actually see the bicep activation. All right. If you want to know how to work inner and outer, I'm not going to get into that, okay? Generally, I believe that the bicep is a muscle that should not be focused on as two different muscles. Um, I'm going to use the calf muscle as an example. So you have two calf muscles. Um, you have the gastrocnemius, which is worked out by stiff-legged standing, oh, stiff standing calf-based workouts. And then you have the soleus, which is worked out by seated base workouts, or workouts where you basically have a bent knee, okay? So, those are two different muscles. They have two different biomechanical actions because of um, the gastroc running to the hip and due to the soleus only running to the knee, okay? So, if you're doing just standing casts, you're never going to actually gain mass in the soleus specifically. It's uh, the calves have to be considered two different muscle groups, basically in terms of bodybuilding. But the biceps are not like that. They do have some. There's not too much separation in the biomechanical. Excuse me, in their biomechanical action. Once again, the general rule. As long as you're um, keeping a shoulder width form and you're getting that elbow forward a bit, you're not keeping it static by your side, you're getting the greatest bicep activation that you can. And you don't want to be switching up bicep var variations too much. Um, you always want to stick to, if you switch your compound for um, a full like three month routine or whatever, that's fine. But you want to keep track of, so if you have a va variation in your routine, like my, one of my variations is my lat pull downs for back, it can change, but you're always doing it in some way, okay? So a great example is you don't want to be starting out with single-handed bent over bicep curls, okay? You want to start with a compound, one that's activating your your mind muscle connection to both of them okay you want to get that full if you're trying to isolate something that works symbiotically with itself already that's not doesn't have different um, connection points on the bone with ligaments and tendons and all that then there is no reason to do variations of that your back is very uh, there's a lot of smaller musculature. There's the rhomboids, you got your rear delts, you have your lower traps, your upper traps, you have your lats. There's a lot going on there. And with that, because when you do t some type of variation, 
if you're doing, let's say, um, I was doing a pronated, but with a pinch grip, basically, that's fine. If I created handles on each side, it's a little different. Um, if I keep a neutral grip, um, everybody's different. This is how some people do neutral grip. I believe neutral grip should be done like this. Um, everybody is different. This is how I believe neutral grip should be done. Um, on a cable lap. Most people, I don't see most people do that. and I, That's just my own theory um, in terms of neutral grip, close neutral grip lap pull downs. Um, you will get much greater lat activation if you actually protract the shoulder blades when you bring it down. Yeah, and I'm bringing it down too far, obviously. But because you're able to actually, you're squeezing that rear delt and that lat right down. Um, I find when you're like this, um, there's a lot of other musculature that kind of can easily become involved, as we know, the, the traps, uh, the rear delts. So everybody's different, and I don't recommend that var variation if you're not used to doing different type of workouts, okay? Alright, so we went ahead and showed you um, standing bicep rows, or standing, standing rows, uh, we've showed seated rows, we've shown single handed rows, we've showed standing bicep curls, uh, double handed, single handed as well, bent over single handed, and I'm just going to go over just some other variations, just so people can get some ideas on what you can do with bands, and here. We have a broken band. So, when you have a broken band and you have no idea what to do with it, I have no markings on this. You could mark it and figure out with markings, but I'm going to do something a bit different. I have my foot on it. I'm going to pinch it right there just so I know where it is. So I'm going to stand up with it and I'm just going to... Actually, I'm going to bring it out more. And you can hear the band. It's under a great amount of tension. It is the smallest band that's broken. But it's still under a great amount of tension. Alright, so I have my pinch point right here. Except for I made a mistake and lost my foot positioning. What I was going to do was just release my foot, put my next foot on it, and stand up. But because I have the mind-muscle connection, I do know how much tension that was. And the other thing, you can hear that that was too much tension. The band will tell me because I can f hear it and feel it, obviously. I usually go over releasing heavy based workouts with the bands. They are actually, back day with bands is one of the easiest days. Um, you can release all of them. If you release the band at the, top, uh, at the bottom of your lat pull down, it's hitting your ceiling. As long as your ceiling is not made out of uh, popcorn or something, you'll most likely be okay. I have a popcorn ceiling.